I get to, I get to, this is a blessing. I get to preach this beautiful gospel this morning. And so thank you once again for coming. But I just want to ask a question here. Who in here loves bread? Come on, somebody. Look at this bread. Come on, come on, come on. Who in here loves some bread? That's some nice bread. Somebody talk to me. Somebody, who loves bread? Raise your hand again. Yeah, I know Mary. I got you. I know Mary loves bread. Look at this bread. There's some sourdough bread up in the house. Come on. There's some white bread, rustic. Miss Sharon, Come rustic on, bread for you, honey. There's some baguettes. That's for Mary right there as well. Um, we Some people just love bread. And today, today is going to be a good day. Uh, there's some bread lovers in the house. I'm a bread lover. Um, but today, I just want to tell you, I'm going to minister Today, I'm going to minister on the true bread, the true bread. There's some bread here, and I, I just don't, you know, I like to share. So just to, to, to Mary, Mary, I know you're a baguette lover. Come on, Mary. So bring that bread to Mary back there. Bring that bread to Mary back there. Come on. I love some bread, but today I want to speak to you about the true bread, the true bread. There's a true bread. Who knows what I'm talking about? It's some true bread. It's called the bread of life. Amen. I, I know Miss... Miss Sharon, it's your birthday, so I just got to pass this to that Ooh. side. Miss Sharon, get some bread. Somebody pass that bread to Miss Sharon awesome. back there. And um, I just got to give a visitor on this side, because come on, who wants this bread? Anybody? There you go. Raise your hand. Take that bread. That's the little bowl bread, the sourdough. I, I, you know, I like to share. This bread looks amazing. I'm going to probably tear it up after this, you know, this scripture. <laughs> Praise God. But I just wanted to put it right before you, because... There's all kinds of bread. There's sourdough bread, and there's the, you know, the baguette there, and there's the white bread, and there's pumpernickel bread, and there's wheat bread. And, but today, church, today, I want to speak to you about the true bread. Yes. The true bread. The title of this message is The True Bread. And then the subtitle is, How Does a True Believer Encounter the True Bread? Amen. Amen. So if you're taking notes today, if you're watching online, how does the true believer encounter the true bread? bread. I'm going to read some scriptures. Let's go to the book of John, chapter 6, verse 25. Stay with me. If you have your Bibles, if you have a phone, you can take it out, open up your apps, read with me. Beginning with 25, verse 25, it says, when they found him on the other side of the lake, they asked him, Rabbi, when did you get here? And Jesus answered, very truly I tell you, you are looking for me, but not because you saw the signs I performed, but because you ate the loaves and you had your fill. Verse 27, do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him, God the Father has placed his seal of approval. Then they asked him, what must we do? to do the works of God requires. And Jesus answered, the work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. To believe in the one he has sent. Verse 30, so they asked him, what sign then will you give that, may, that we may see it and believe you? What will you do? What will you do? They're asking all these questions. Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. And Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, it is not Moses, come on, it is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. 33, for the bread of God is the bread that comes down from heaven that gives life to the world. Sir, they said, always give us this bread. And then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever, whoever comes to me will never go hungry and whoever believes will never be thirsty. But as I told you, you have seen me and I still do not believe. But I told you, you have seen me and you still do not believe. All those the Father gives me will come to me and whoever comes to me I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. Verse 39, I'm closing with these two. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I shall lose none. That is the will of the Father, that he shall lose none of all those who, has, who he has given me. But raise them up 
at the last day. For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Father, we thank you for the word. We thank you that it's already living and active, and I thank you that it will not return void in Jesus' name. Today, I want to speak to you about the true bread, man. Look. I'm just in love with Jesus. I'm in love with Jesus and he's the true bread. And we're just gonna take these scriptures down and we're just gonna break them down. We're just gonna dissect a little bit. So verse 25, when he says, when they found him on the other side of the lake and they asked Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered, very truly, I tell you, you are looking for me, but not, but, uh, not because you saw the signs I performed, but because you ate the loaves in the fields. Do not work for food right here, this is the key. Do not work for food that spoils, but food that endures yes. eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you on, uh, on him. God the Father has placed the seal of approval. Jesus criticized the people in this point and the disciples because they followed him only for the physical and the temporal benefits. Wow. Come on. And not to satisfy their spiritual hunger. Jesus doesn't want us to follow him for what he can give you. He's definitely not a sugar daddy. He's not a gimme God. He's not a God that we just go to about bless me and give me and give me and I need this and I need that. So he's telling the disciples, you, you, you came here because you're looking for signs, but you, you don't even believe. He says, right here, do not work for the spoils. This food is not, is it, it's not gonna last. So he's saying, look, don't look for the benefits, but come on, Disciples, come on, people of God, to, to look for the things that are going to satisfy and going to give you spiritual hunger. Yeah. We as believers must be careful not to fall in the same traps. Yeah. These men walked with God. These men saw they were with him, and then a little bit later it said they didn't even believe. So the first point I want to give you, how does a true believer encounter the true bread? Is number one, we follow Christ because he is truth, yeah. and his ways lead to life. Number one, if you're taking yes. notes, we follow Christ because he is truth and his ways lead to life. John 14, 6 states this. I love the scripture. Jesus said, I am the way, come on, the truth and the life. No one, no one comes to the Father except through me. That is number one. We're moving on, 28. And then they asked him, what must we do to do the works that, that requires? And Jesus answered very simply. The work of God is this, to believe in the one he sent. I could just imagine sitting there, they're sitting with Jesus and they're waiting for this elaborate soliloquy yeah. <laughs> that Jesus is going to go into and pour out these 10 points of boom, 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 boom. This is what it is. This is, this is how you please the Father. This is the work of the Father. This is how you're going to please the Father. And, and he simply says, you believe in the one he sent, right? You believe in the one he sent. Verses 29 says, many sincere seekers of God are puzzled about what God desires them to do. I think sometimes we just think that it, it's a work basis and we got to do this to gain God's love and we got to do this to receive from God and we got to do all these things. True believers, people that love Jesus, that have accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, sometimes we are obtaining this love. Sometimes we're, we're trying to obtain, we're trying to seek out what is this? And even, uh, what is this? And even in the Old Testament, if you remember, for those that are familiar with the story of Elijah, maybe not everybody's been familiar with the story, they were cutting and slashing themselves um, be, to a false god, and he never came. Yeah. So we don't, we're not here seeking a god of wood and stubble. Yeah. God wants us to yeah. seek him. God sent his son that we may seek him, that we may believe in the one true God, the true bread. He said it's very simple. Believe in the one who sent. The application study Bible says this. There are many religions of the world that are people's attempts to answer this question. Many religions believe by works that they do the works of God. They're trying to figure out how can we get to God? How can we do? And Jesus simply says, believe in the one I sent. Yeah. Believe in the one I sent. Amen. Is it that simple, Pastor Liz? Absolutely. Yeah. Believe in the one I sent. Amen. So point number two, if you're taking notes, it is we believe in whom God sent. And why do we believe? Come on. <laughs> we believe in whom God sent because we can obtain this eternal life because the one God sent died on the cross for all of humanity. Yes. That's why we believe in the one God sent. 
He died for all of humanity. Another point, number two, underneath, sub-point number two. We can be set free because of the one God sent. All authority, church, hear me. All authority has been given unto Christ, and he has the anointing to break yokes. Yeah. Yeah. We believe in the one he sent because he has all authority, and he's anointed to break yokes. What does that mean? That if you are carrying a stronghold, if there's an addiction in your life, if there's a stronghold, if there's something that you know does not please the Father, or it doesn't even please you, and you just cannot keep this habit, whether it's a habit, it's a stronghold, you can label it what it is, but it's something that you cannot control in your life that you are not pleased with or the Heavenly Father is not pleased with. God sent His Son Jesus and He has all authority. All authority on this earth and He has the anointing to break the yokes. There's a scripture in the Bible that says, the anointing breaks yokes. And guess what, church? He's given it to us. There's an anointing upon your life if you're a believer of Jesus Christ. And God is looking for the church to rise up in this hour and exercise this authority that he's given us. That's why we went on a three-day fast because the devil wanted to raise his head and bring chaos into this church or this family, situation, circumstances. And we say, not on our watch. Jesus said, I have all authority and I give it unto you. And we say yes and amen. And we receive the authority of Christ. And we walk in it. We walk in it. I am a powerful. Why? Not because I'm Elizabeth Garcia. Because Jesus, the resurrection Christ lives in me. And he's given me authority. And I walk in the authority of God. Yeah. Does that mean you're cocky? No, that means I'm very confident in who I am. Yeah. Hello? Yeah. <laughs> I'm very confident in who I am. I'm confident in the one that lives inside of me. Yeah. I'm confident in the one that saved me and rescued me and delivered me. That's who I'm confident in. That's the name. It's the name above all names. His name is Jesus, the true bread. So number two, come on. Number two, we believe in whom God sent. We also believe, come on, we can fill the we can be filled with the Holy Spirit. We believe because we can be filled with the Holy Spirit because the one that God sent is the baptizer. Jesus is the baptizer. He's the one that baptizes with the evidence of speaking in tongues. We believe in the one that God sent because Jesus is the baptizer. And four, we can rest. Because the one God sent does not sleep or slumber. I'm here to tell you, you might have had sleepless nights, but I'm here to tell you that Jesus is never sleeping. Jesus, the Bible says that he is the great intercessor. He's sitting at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for you and for I. What does that mean? He is praying for us. He's seen the struggle. He sees the difficulty on this earth. He's seen Hurricane Ida. He's seen college students. You have to come to school and fly back home. Some of you displaced in Dallas, some of you here, some of you there. But guess what? Take at heart because the true intercessor, Jesus, does not sleep or slumber. He is praying for us even now. So there's a resting in that. There's an excitement in that, that knowing that this Jesus that we serve, the one he sent, the one God sent, we can rest in that and be assured that he's praying for us and he's covering us in prayer. And I'll just go a little step. That's why the house of God, the assembly of God, the people of God are so important. Because not only Jesus, but we are praying for one another. Yeah. We are covering each other in prayer. We are uh, with God. We are, we're here crying out for God, even on Wednesday nights, just believing God for our community, for just restoration, for you college students. Just believing God that God would do a work in you while you're here in New Orleans from wherever you came from. God is very strategic. There's no accidents with God. God has sent you to the city for such a time as this. And I just want to say, enjoy the journey. Enjoy the journey. When I was doing my doctorate, that was what they told us. Enjoy the journey. Oh, Lord, help me, Jesus. Yeah, just enjoy the journey. It is a marathon. It's not a sprint. So enjoy these years. Enjoy it. Receive. Amen. Verse 30. So they asked him, what sign then will you give that we may see it and believe you? What will you do? Our ancestors ate man. I'm going to skip all the way down because I read it for 30, um, 34. Sir, they said, always give us this bread. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be 
first thing. It's just a key, it's a key script, scripture right there. People can eat bread to satisfy, come on, the physical hunger and to sustain a physical life. People eat the bread, bread, regular bread, to satisfy physical hunger, to stay in a physical life. We can satisfy spiritual hunger to stay in spiritual life only by a relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. There's Amen. nothing in this world that can satisfy you but Him. There is a place in your heart, there's a place reserved that only Jesus is can come in and dwell and live for. So many times, I don't know about you, but I know in my... In my, even as a young adult, I knew Jesus as 11 years old. I knew him as a child and, um, and then really had a relationship with at 11 years old with, with the Lord and then even greater when I was 24 years old. But I just remember there was something missing in my teenage years. I walked away from God and I just remember just missing something. There was nothing on this earth that I could fulfill it. I couldn't fulfill it with a man, come on. I couldn't fulfill it with any liquor or drugs. I mean, praise God that I never touched that. But thank you, Jesus. I, there was nothing. There was nothing. There was absolutely nothing in this world that I could seek after or touch or taste that it satisfied me. Because there's something in us, because we were created by God, that only Jesus can fill. Yeah. And whereas people are searching all over this world, and yeah. the religious, yeah. just searching, many religions, just search. What is it? What is it? There's something missing. I'm here to submit to you. It's the true bread. It's the true bread. When I met this true bread, my life changed completely. I'm telling you, I could not. I couldn't, everything looked different. Yeah. I woke up, everything looked different. Perspective, my eyes changed. Everything looked different. My What I saw through vision, it looked different. You woke up, the, they say the sky's blue or the grass is greener. It really was because you're looking through different lenses. I was lost, but I was found. He came and he reached me. The Bible says that he leaves the 99 to go after the one. And guess what, church? He came after me in New York City. When I was a mess, I was dirty, I was nasty. But God said, you're mine. You belong to me. God said, Jesus, the only one for me. If it was always the only one on this earth, for me. Guess what? For you as well. For every individual that is seated in this place yeah. and that lives on the face of this earth, yeah. Jesus has come. It's an amazing love story. But he said, I'm seeking you out. I'm going to seek you out. You're not dirty enough, come on, come on. You can't be dirty enough, you can't be nasty enough, you can't be far distant enough, you can't turn your back on me enough. There's this reckless love of God that is consistent. It is, it, it just doesn't relent, it doesn't give up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a beautiful love story. If you haven't known this Jesus, I pray that you get to know him. It is absolutely beautiful. We can only be satisfied by Jesus. Verse 36 says, but as I told you, you have seen me and still do not believe. And those the Father gives me will come to me. And whoever comes to me, I will never drive away. I love it. And whoever comes to me, I will never drive away. I will never. Do you hear those words? I will never drive away. Do you understand the gravity of that statement? That whoever, 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 the abuser, the addict, come on, the pornographer, come on, the sexual molestation, come on, whoever comes to me, I will never drive away. There's absolutely nothing on this earth that can separate you from the love of God and can drive God away from you. There was nothing I could do. There was nothing that I did. There is nothing anyone on this earth that can do to drive Jesus away from you. Whosoever comes to me, whosoever, we are the whosoever. Yeah. We are the whosoever. And we have been given this great gift. I will never drive away, for I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of the one who sent me. He repeats it again. I'm here to do the will of the Father. Jesus did not work independently of God, the Father, but in union with him. They are one. He didn't come on his own agenda. Jesus' purpose was to do the will of the Father, not to satisfy Jesus' human desires. He was 100% man. He was 100% God. 
But when he came on this earth, he didn't come to gratify his human desires. He was flesh. He feels how we feel. He cried. Where we cried, just as the scripture, Jesus wept. He went through emotions, but he did not come to fulfill his desires. He came to do the will of the Father. When we follow Jesus, we should have the same purpose. Father, what is your will for my life? Some of you may be seeking and searching, you even saying, what's my major? Mm -hmm. Father, what's my major? I've done this, I've done that, I don't know where I'm going. Just be still and know that God hears your prayers and he will lead you. There's a scripture in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says that if we acknowledge God in all our ways that he's going to direct our path. And so as we acknowledge the Father, we say, God, I don't know. Be at peace for the Lord is with you. He will direct your path. He will lead you. He will show you. Do not fret. Do not fear. For the Lord your God is with you. He's with you. He's with us. Even those that don't know Jesus. When I didn't know Jesus, he was still with me. He came for me. You know, do you guys understand that? That he's pursuing you. He's pursuing you. He pursued me. It says, when I was yet a sinner, <laughs> he still loved me. He's pursuing you. He's pursuing us. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful thing. You know why I say that? Because I don't know about your relationships, but I know there are some relationships that people just pursue for what they can get. There was nothing I can give Jesus. But he gave me the best gift, yeah. eternal life. He gave me life, and guess what? He cleaned me up. He changed my thinking. He changed my mindset. He changed the way I saw life. He changed the way I did things. He changed my speech. Come on. I don't know about you, but I, I was F-bombing and cursing. I was just nasty. In my junk. But God, he changed my language, my verbiage. I'm never ashamed to talk about the goodness of God and what God has done for me. It's a testimony. I'm a sign and a wonder of the goodness of God. <laughs> and I rejoice with it. I'm never ashamed to share my testimony. Because God is faithful and good. And you need to know that this preacher woman that's on fire for God wasn't always there. But the restoration and the redeeming power of God, and there's no one he cannot reach. That's the testimony. There's absolutely no one he cannot reach. Amen? So how does a true believer encounter the true bread? Number three, we do the will of the Father. We do the will of the Father. If you're taking notes, you could do one or A or whatever. We'll go with A. The will of the Father is to win souls, church. That's the will of the Father. B. <laughs> We are in, look, I'm talking to students today, so we're going down an outline right here, baby. Number B, or the letter B, we are imitators of Christ, and the will of the Father for Christ was to win us for himself. So if we're imitators of Christ, and Christ came down to win us, then guess what? We need to win souls. So C, so the will of the Father for humanity was us on this earth. So guess what? We're to win souls for God through Christ. We can't do it by ourselves, it's through Christ Jesus. It's through the preaching of this beautiful gospel, the charisma, come on, the death, the burial, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ. He died, yes. For three days he was on the cross, he left a brutal, he was dead, he was buried, but guess what? On the third day church, he rose again, and he lives with resurrected power, and he's given that in us because he lives in us. He lives in us. So. We now, in turn, have to be imitators of Christ and do what Christ did when he was on this earth. He seeked for the lost. He seeked for them. He, he went to seek and to save that which was lost. Our job is to seek and save that which is lost. We can't save anybody, but we can share this gospel. Jesus does the saving. We're just the messenger. Amen? Does anybody have a message of the true bread? If that's you, say amen and raise your hand. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. D, we continue to work. We continue where Jesus left off. This gospel message didn't, didn't stop because Jesus went to heaven. He has empowered us. He has commissioned us. Matthew, come on, Matthew talks about going out. Going out and making disciples. Matthew 28, the last 
that last thing, Jesus is about to go into heaven and he commissions us to go forth and to make disciples, baptizing the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them everything that I taught you. He wanted the disciples to teach those everything that Jesus taught them. And then he says this, I'm going to be with you forever. I'll be with you. So we don't have to fear in sharing this gospel. God has commissioned the church, us, believers in Christ, to go forth and do the work of the Lord. Amen? Amen. And this is so precious. Number, letter E, we don't have to do it alone. The Holy Spirit. We can only do the work with the help of the Holy Spirit. So we're not in this alone. The Holy Spirit is leading and guiding us and is with us to do this work. 39. And this will be of him who sent me, that I shall lose none of all those he has given me, but raise them up at the last day. The will of the Father is that none shall be lost, but this is predicated on an individual's commitment to believe in Christ. I like to preach the full gospel. <laughs> I love the love story, but I must be honest, it's predicated, church. It is predicated, this love, this relationship, that none will be lost. It's predicated on the individual's commitment. It's predicated on you and I to believe in Christ. That's why Jesus was just determined. To, God was determined to send his son to just be a radical on this earth, to tell as many people, to, to show through signs and wonders that he's a true living God. But it is predicated. And to walk in authentic relationship with him. He's called us to walk in authentic relationship. Not, not one day in, one day out, not up and down. Though God, though we go through things and though we, though we go through trials and tribulations and situations in our life, God has still called us to grow from glory to glory to glory. We gotta keep our eyes on Jesus and not get lost in the mess and in the shuffle of life and things when things come at us. This commitment must not be superficial. Come on, this commitment with Jesus cannot be superfi superficial, church. As we as was the commitment of those disciples who turned away. It's very important that I read this to you. In John 6, 6, it says this. John 66. From this time, from this time, many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. I'm going to just read this and it'll explain a little bit what I'm talking about. In the Life Application New Testament commentary says this. Jesus was saying tough things and this caused many of the disciples to not follow anymore. Within sight of the kingdom of heaven, privilege, check this out, within sight of the kingdom of heaven, privilege with a taste of the bread of life and watching the living water flow, they nevertheless walk away. They walked away. In a short sentence, Jesus, excuse me, in the short sentence, John captured one of the saddest moments in the ministry of Jesus. Why did they walk away? Because Jesus preached some hard things. Yeah. Jesus said, <laughs> you can't be of that anymore. You can't be in light and darkness anymore. You have to choose. I am the way, the truth, and the life. You have to choose me in my ways. And I have instructions in this word of God to bring you good news and to bring you life. But you have to walk in my ways. He has a scripture that says you have to deny yourself and follow me. Yeah. That means, what does that mean, deny yourself? Well, deny yourself of things that don't bring glory to God. Deny yourself of ways that maybe you know doesn't honor God. Amen? So there's some sin in our life that needs to be denied. Our flesh needs to be put down. And we don't like that. And Jesus, if you read it on, I'm not going to take the time to read it, but read it on. Read that chapter 6. He starts preaching this gospel, Jesus, and they're not feeling it. Has anybody ever been in church and you were like, ooh, my toes are being stomped on right now. Pastor Liz, ooh, ah, Pastor John, they are just crushing me. right? Because the word of God is piercing. Come on. He didn't come to tickle our ears and say what we want to hear. He came to preach the truth and he was preaching this gospel message. He was preaching, he was ministering what God had given him and they didn't like it and they turned away. Have any of you ever turned away? You ain't got to raise your hand. I didn't like what happened there in that church. That pastor, oh, I'm, I'm going to get a little messy for a minute. Oh, I, they didn't do my songs. Or the, guys, we have to grow up, church. Jesus is coming back for his church. We can't be stuck on petty stuff. We got to rise up above this. God challenges us. Jesus said some piercing things, piercing statements. He challenged us to walk with him, holy, 
consecrated, separate from sin. We can't play with mess and walk with God. For God is holy. But I want to tell you this. He's such a gentleman that as you are walking out this process with God and you're still a little messy, it's okay. When I came to church, I was still a little messy. And I thank God I was involved in a loving church that no one came to me and said, you can't do that, you can't do that, gave me a list of rules. No, 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 no. Thank you, Jesus, for Bethlehem Church in New York City. Hallelujah. They just walked with me. And they showed me the love of God. And little by little, I was like, mm, I don't like that anymore. That needs to come off. Mm, that language needs to stop. When I would, God forgive me. By a month later, it was gone. But I was pursuing God. And I'm telling you here, if there's anything in your life that you need to be gone, God can do it. God is pursuing you, but he's looking not for a super, superficial relationship. He wants a true commitment. Amen? A true commitment. If his disciples walked away from Christ, come on. If his disciples walked with Christ and then walked away from him, what makes us think that we can't as well? So I just want to say, let's be sober-minded. Let's be like Peter. Peter said in John 6, 67 and 68, he says, Who do not, who, I'm sorry, you do not want to leave. We do not want to leave you. Do you? Jesus asked the 12. Simon Peter answered him, Lord, whom shall we go? Let us be like Peter and say, who are we going to go? Well, who are we going to follow? Because Jesus is like, well, who else is going to leave? Jesus is, he's a soldier. He, Jesus is not a punk. Let me just tell you, he's a man's man. He's a warrior. He was like, who else is going to leave? If you're going to leave, this is a time. Who, who? And, 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 and Peter says, God, where are we going to go? He says, Jesus, where we will go? I have nothing. You're the one. You're the true living God. You're the only one I can follow. Let us be like Peter. Let us be sober-minded in this time. Amen. Let us be sober-minded. I am closing with 40. Verse 40. Come on, church. For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in Him shall have eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. Jesus' reply was very simple. We must believe on, the, on Him who God has sent. Once again, satisfying God does not come from the work we do, church. Yeah. Did everybody hear that? Yeah. Satisfying God does not come from the work we do, but from whom we believe but from whom we believe. The first step involves accepting that Jesus is the one he claims to be, that he is the son of God, that he is the way, the truth, and the life, that he is the true bread, that he's the true bread that gives life, eternal life. All spiritual development is built on this affirmation. Everything is built on this affirmation. And the last point, how does the true believer encounter the true bread? Guess what, church? We continue to choose Christ daily. We continue to choose him daily. We guard our relationship with Christ. We do not let it become stale. We cannot let our relationship with God become... I've heard people say, man, this Christianity is boring. I don't know why you're serving because it's never been boring to me. I know we go through dry, dry seasons, but I'm telling you, there's a power of God that lives inside of us that if we, have, if we run to him, if we pursue him, he will resurrect. He said he will give us living waters. He will give us life. He said we don't have to hunger and thirst. He's the one that will fill us. Amen? Break away from some routines and sometimes be spontaneous with God. What do you mean by that, Pastor John? Pastor Liz? Sometimes we do the same thing religious. Okay, we're going to read for one thing, and then we're going to worship for 10 minutes, and then we're going to do this. And God says, God is a creative God. Maybe he'll tell you, go take a walk right there in Tulane. It's beautiful. Just go take a walk, and, and just, I just want to talk with you. I just, just pray with me outside. Be spontaneous. God is creative. Now, I want to make this statement. Discipline does not mean routine. Mark it down. Discipline does not mean routine. My God is creative. When I come to God to pray, I say, God, what do you want today? <laughs> it's different every day. Yes, we, it's, we're going to read the word. We're going to have a time of prayer. We're going to have a time of worship. But it's going to look different every day. It can look different. So maybe you're saying, I'm bored with this. Allow it to be spontaneous. Allow God to move upon you. Amen? So today, if you guys can play, you guys can hear me. Amen? We're going to conclude with this. I thank you for your time. I thank you for listening.
but the true bread is in the house, the one that gives life. And there's three questions that I have for you, and they can, for three different people maybe in this room, who here today needs to encounter the true bread of life? You've heard me talk about the true bread, which is Jesus, the Son of God, but you don't know him, but you want to know him. You want to begin this relationship, maybe this, this conversation. Maybe you're here in the room, and maybe that's you. Maybe the second person may be who here needs to recommit. You've known this true bread. You've experienced Jesus. You've walked with Jesus. But whether it's the trials of life, whether it was yourself, whether it was something that just made you walk away. Maybe it was disappointment. Maybe something happened. Maybe you feel like Jesus failed you. Has anybody ever felt that Jesus failed them? Raise your hand. Be real. I remember at one point in my life, one time, I felt like he abandoned me. And I had a major problem with it. But I did business with God. And he did business with me. Because he was relentless. <laughs> Maybe today you need to recommit. Say, you know what? I know this Jesus. I served him all my life. Oh, I've known him for some time, but I just kind of let my relationship go to the wayside. And maybe the third person in this room, you're loving Jesus and you're walking with Jesus strong. But you're saying, who here today wants more of this true bread of life? Because I'm telling you, there's always more. There's always more. So for the first one, just raise your hand. If you want to encounter this true bread for the first time, or maybe you've heard this message before, just raise your hand. Just wave to me. If you want to encounter this true bread today. Anyone in the room? Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Your family. It's okay. Thank you, sister. For those who want to recommit, just raise your hand for me. You want to recommit this engagement with God. You want to walk again with the Lord. Anyone? And lastly, who wants more of Jesus? Amen. We're in relationship with Jesus, so we want more. Amen. Well, let's just stand to our feet. We're going to end here this prayer. And I want to let you know, for those that are watching online, I love you. If you've raised your hand for any of three, just write it down. We want to pray with you. We will watch these. If you need prayer for anything, my sister, you can come up. We would love to pray with you. Uh, if I can have Miss Olive just come up. Thank you. We'll pray with my sister. You can stand right there. We would love to pray with you if our prayer team can come up. And I just want to bless you. I just want to pray for you that you would just receive more of this true bread. Amen. Father, today we just thank you for this beautiful service. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your love. We thank you for what you're doing in this place. And we pray for these individuals that are here in this house, God. That Lord, many raise their hands. those who hunger and thirst shall be filled and that you are the bread of life and you will give us this bread so father let us receive let us receive today your joy your peace your love you know every struggle every situation right now and lord we just ask you just to remove it we ask you that lord your people would come to you and just open up god that they would walk in true commitment true commitment father we love you, Lord. I speak a blessing over the body of Christ today. I speak a blessing, God, that, Lord, as they leave today, they started their week in the house of the Lord, that you would bless them as the rest of the week, that you would protect them and watch over them, that, Lord, you would just provide for them, that you would make a way where there seems to be no way. You know everything. And so we just thank you. We bless them. We thank you that they are blessed. We thank you that as they're in school and as they're studying, that you will be with them, that you will touch their minds, that you would give them strategies to study, God, that you would, God, help them to retain the information that they have studied and that they do it well and that, God, they would give you the glory for it. And we pray all these things in the mighty and the powerful name of Jesus. Amen, church. Amen. We thank you for coming. Uh, we just love you, Brother Justin. If you can open that door, we would love to meet you outside, Pastor John and I. And uh, we just thank you for coming. The worship team is going to continue to be here. If you need prayer for anything, if you just want to enjoy this worship, you're welcome to stay seated and be a part of that. But we just want to say thank you for those that are watching.
watching online, we love you, we bless you. Take of the true bread of God in Jesus.